I've been building decks for over 30 years and I've seen this mistake made over and over again. It's so important that I'm gonna teach you guys how to install a joist hanger properly and what fasteners you should be using. So what I have here is a standard industrial joist hanger. They make these to hold the joists to the house properly. What you need to know, first thing, is that you can't just use any old fastener to put these in. These are designed to be used with only a couple different types of fasteners. One's called a Tico nail. T-E-C-O, which was an engineered nail that was made by a company over 30, 40 years ago, but that name just stuck. Nowadays, we call that a joist hanger nail. So joist hanger nails are designed, there's two different lengths usually. One goes through the face of the hanger. On this particular hanger, it's made for a two by 10, 10 inch joist, okay? So you're gonna run inch and a half nails through here because your ledger board is usually an inch and a half thick so you'll nail inch and a half nails through the face there's eight spots on this particular hanger it's okay to run an inch and a half nail you can run longer ones if you're going into wood but sometimes if you have a concrete backing behind it you can't run more than an inch and a half nail so inch and a half nails go in here that's what it's engineered for then you have this double shear nail hole right here there's four of those as well and i don't know if you can tell on camera but these heights are staggered a little bit so that the nails cross over without penetrating each other or trying to hit each other on the way in. These ones go in at an angle. And if you're using nails, you have to use a three inch joist hanger nail. You just can't use any screw that you pick up at Home Depot. They're not structural. They're gonna snap, they're gonna break. We'll get into that in a minute because that's what we're gonna use as structural screws to put in this hanger. But if you're gonna use nails, you gotta use a nail that's three inches long. That is by the manufacturer's spec. Don't ask me why. I've seen joist hanger nails sold in two and a half inches long, but technically a two and a half inch nail through this hole right here is not acceptable. Now, if you use a structural screw made by the same company that makes the joist hanger, they make the structural screw two and a half inches. Screws usually have better pullout strength than nails do, so that's why you can put a screw that's only two and a half inches long versus a nail that needs to be three inches long. So we're gonna run inch and a half structural screws, they call them SD screws, into here, and then we're gonna run a two and a half inch SD screw through these four holes next, so that that ties the joist to the wall and to the hanger. And then it has a place to nest right here where it sits nice and flat up against the joist hanger and it pulls everything to the wall so it's called like a double shear strength double shear screwing they used to be stamped on here double shear nailing even they say nails but they actually sell right here different length fasteners for your joist hangers now I buy in bulk okay so these fasteners one box is inch and a half one box is two and a half you might not need a thousand dollars worth of screws so you may not consider purchasing these in bulk but these boxes are almost 500 bucks a piece but we use them all the time and it is so nice to have a structural screw when you need it for your joist hanger in your trailer or on site instead of running to the hardware center to go pick them up all you need now is your joist hanger you need a drill, which I have downstairs, because we're gonna film this from up here, but I'm gonna be underneath the deck installing this joist hanger, okay? But I just wanted to show you the area we're going into. So we have this one spot on our deck. Now, this was a remodel. This deck was a remodel, and we added framing to it, but the original framing did not have joist hangers on the joists that are attached to the ledger. So we went through and we added joist hangers to everything, but we just hadn't put one on this one yet. These are just toe nailed to the wall. That's not the proper way to install a joist. It's not safe. I don't recommend it. That's a temporary fix, in my opinion. Even though there's a beam underneath this right here holding this up, we still want to use a joist hanger to kind of keep everything tied together. So I'm going to open up these buckets and you can see Here's, here's my inch and a half SD screw. These are gonna go through the joist hanger and into the ledger. And then here's those two and a half inch screws that I was telling you about. And these ones are gonna go through here on an angle and they're gonna pierce the side of the joist and then they're gonna go into the ledger as well. And there's four of those. So if I wanted to, I could use these all through here as well but it's not necessary. So we're gonna take some of these for our side fasteners, and then we have the inch and a half for our face fasteners into these four holes here. You'll also notice on this hanger, 
there's a little cutaway that you can use and hammer those in if you want to to kind of hold the joist hanger in place one thing you want to make sure when you're installing this guys is that the bottom of this hanger sits all the way up on the bottom of your joist okay so that's helps hold it in case it wants to drop so you got to make sure it's up tight i've seen these where i can put my finger in them people didn't install them properly so it's just something to think about when you're installing this that you have a nice snug fit all right i'm going to run downstairs and get set up and studio man's going to film this from up top and we'll get this baby installed so you can see how it works you can't really see me because i'm underneath the deck but the most important thing is that you see how this is installed so what i'm doing is i'm going to push up on this hanger and make sure that the bottom of it's touching the bottom of the joist. And I'm gonna go ahead and put one screw in this side to start. And this is a quarter inch drive bit on my impact driver. Okay, once that one's in and I'm happy with that, I need to do one of the higher ones. I'm gonna go ahead and get this top one in. Okay, so those four are in. Okay, now that I got that side in, I'm going to make sure that my joist hanger, again, is sitting nice and tight up against the bottom of the joist. And then I'm going to go ahead and try to reach that top screw. This is really a little bit of a compromised situation, but that went in really well. So now I just got three more inch and a half screws to do. I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom one. You want to make sure that you're not overdriving these, but that you're getting them nice and snug to the steel and this product has a special coating called z max on it which gives it an extra corrosion protection so now all of my fasteners against the wall are in now it's time to put in the longer screws and remember you got to use these longer fasteners for the sides you can't use the inch and a half you have to use these two and a half inch screws here we go Okay, that sat real nice. Okay, that side's done. All right, last two screws. And that's done. All right, guys, so there you go. That's all there is to it. Just make sure that that joist hanger is nice and snug before you add your fasteners. Don't overdrive your fasteners. Make sure they're structural fasteners designed for those joist hangers. And that's a safe way to put in your joist hanger and not have the fastener snap or break off in a seismic event or other movement of your deck. Thanks for watching this video, guys. We really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.